Hallelujah. Well, good morning, Truth Church. Good morning, Truth Church. Hallelujah. It's good to see you this morning again. Our guests and those that are with us this morning. It's such a delight to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Amen. Come on, let's just give God praise and a hand clap of praise or shout or hand wave for just being in the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. He's done it again. You've been able to get through this week and no hurt, harm, or danger. Weapons may fall, but they shall not prosper. Hallelujah. It's good to know. That's good to know. Let's open up our books to uh, our Bibles to, uh, we're going to start with Psalms 1. Amen. Psalms 1 and, and 1. Start at verse 1, and I think I'm going to read through verse 6. Amen. How many of us are blessed? Hallelujah. We are blessed people. Hallelujah. God's chosen elect. I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I love the Psalms. It started in Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Blessed, and I'm reading from the NIV. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Now we understand that Jesus fulfilled the law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, we, we look at verse 3. It says that person, when we read God's word and we understand who Jesus is and what Christ has done for us and we live holy, he says that person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. That means no matter what season in you're in, whatever it is that you produce, it will not wither. <laughs> Whatever they do prospers. Verse 4, not so the wicked, they are like the chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Amen. We ready to go on in, Q. Yes, sir. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. Starting at verse 14. Ephesians chapter 3. Starting at verse 14. And I'm going to read through verse 21. It says, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Paul says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell where? In your hearts through faith. And I pray being rooted in and establish in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ hallelujah we read this on yesterday but we need to get the revelation and understanding of that and it says in verse 19 and to know this love that surpasses knowledge you can't think it out. You can't figure it out. His, he just loves you. He loves us. So it goes beyond your knowledge or your understanding. Why? That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I love this benediction. It says, now to him, in verse 20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably 
more anybody got any expectation from the Lord. <laughs> see, see, there's benefits to being holy. There's benefits to being righteous. He says in verse 20, to him who is able to do what? Immeasurably more than all we ask or measure, imagine, according to his what? Power that is at work where? Within us. To him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout what all generations forever and ever amen see there's something that's supposed to happen when we as the believers come together as the church comes together there's supposed to be an expectation that God is going to do mightily he's going to do exceedingly beyond what we can think or imagine Right, because we are in expectation that signs, miracles, and wonders are going to follow. Yeah. Hallelujah. So when we come into the house of the Lord, there's an expectation that God is going to move. He's already moving on your behalf. You're alive today, aren't you? He's, <laughs> you ain't got to wait to fall in the floor. He's already moving on your behalf. Yeah. So whatever it is that you're standing in the need of, everybody say, God's got it. He's got it. He's got it. So, so let's go ahead and give him praise. I'm getting ready to pray and we get ready to open up and we're going to worship God. But let's go ahead and, and praise him for what he has already done. But then not only for what he's done, but then what is he going to do in this place? Amen. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you so much for this day. This is the day that you've made, Lord, and you told us to be rejoiceful, Lord, to be glad in it, Lord. And, Lord, we will, we shall be glad, God, because if it hadn't been for the Lord on our side, oh, where would we be? But, Father, we thank you, Lord, that as this time of gathering, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father, you're calling forth true worshipers. You're calling forth the true believers in you. Because, Lord, we know that we have not accomplished anything in and of ourselves. Great are you, Lord. Father, and great, and you're greatly to be praised. So, God, we shout hallelujah. We clap our hands, God. We, we stomp our feet, Lord. We will open up our mouths and sing, Father, the songs of Zion, Lord. And we pray in Jesus' name, God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. That we're mighty through you, God. And we thank you, God. And we understand, God, that your word is not limited. Father, that your Holy Spirit is not limited. Father, it will reach. It will do what it needs to do, God. And we just pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that we come into agreement, Father, for what you've already done, what your word declares, God. We believe it. We believe it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and God you're good and we pray Lord that as uh, Q Sean comes and as the music ministry plays God that we will hear from Zion on this morning Lord and we pray Lord that your presence your presence is already here but Lord we just want to come into agreement with what you're doing but Father we also pray for the man of God that's going to come forth and preach the word of God on today Father that you will give us instructions God from heaven let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven God and we just thank you on today God that you thought it not robbery Lord that we may not participate but we can participate in 2024 Lord as we make kingdom impact hallelujah I said kingdom impact in 2024 so Lord we pray that those that don't know you Lord that they will give their lives to you Father, we pray that our brothers and sisters that may be struggling in bondage, that, God, the bondages will be broken, that the chains will be broken in Jesus' mighty name. And so, Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy and righteous name, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, we lift up hallelujah. We lift up hallelujah. We lift up praises to you. Glorify your name, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's open up our mouth. Let's exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, let's lift up our hands. And come on, begin to magnify him. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, let's magnify him. Let's make him bigger in this house this morning. God, you're bigger than anything. God, you're greater than anything. Your name is above every name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you. Oh, come on, you say, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour. It's your in our lungs. So we pour. So we pour out our praise to you. Oh, it's your in our lungs. So we pour. Yes, Lord. It's your realm in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you. Oh, come on, let's make a big and say, Great are you, great are you, Lord. One more time and say, Great are you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's do it again. Come on, say, It's your realm in our lungs. So we pour, in our love, so we pour, yes, it's your breath, in my love, so we pour, pour out our praise, it's your breath, in our love, so we pour out it's your breath is in our lungs, so we pour. In our lungs, so we pour. We're going to give it back to you. We pour in our praise to It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour. It's your in our lungs. So we pour. Come on, hands lift the door and say, Great are you, great are you, Lord. One more time, great are you. All the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Yeah, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Come on, you pull on and say, All the earth, all the earth. Will cry, these bones will. What will you sing? Yes, sir. Real good, real good. Come on, say. All the earth, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these real shout and say, Great. Yes, sir. One more time. All the earth will. We declare in the house, all the earth will sing. Our hearts will grasp these bones. Take away. Are you Lord? Say, is your breath, is your breath in our lungs? So we pour out our praise. Yes, sir. 
something can really happen when we actually just praise him when we actually praise him he's pouring back into us because when you praise him we maybe say I may be tired and I need strength when you praise him he gives you strength when you praise him when you a lot of confusion going on he gives you peace when you praise him so at this moment I don't know what you in need of today but whatever you need of, I dare you just to praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Or can I just say this? When hands go up, praise is loud. Because whatever that you in need of him for today, it can happen right now. That's not just a saying, it can happen when hands go up and you begin to praise loud. Because if you need a healing, if you need a peace, if you need a joy, it can come, it can happen right now. Look at your neighbor and say, it can happen right now. You just got to believe it, it can happen right now. Yes, Lord. Open the eyes, hey! 
God. Come on, pour out to him. Say, oh, oh, I really need you, Lord. I really need you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. One more time, say, oh, oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Search your Lord. Couldn't find nobody. Search high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. And what you to declare true say nobody oh come on nobody 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 greater than you we know that's just a song but if you really know god personally come on lift your hands and say i searched all over searched all couldn't find i searched high and low couldn't find nobody nobody greater come on put confidence when it nobody greater nobody greater than ah, come on we're gonna sing it one more time then we're gonna get out of the way come on nobody greater nobody greater nobody greater your name is above all names. Yes, Lord. Your word. Your name is above all names. The word of all I pray. Mighty are the words of your hand. Mighty are the words of your hand. Your name is above all names. We adore you, Lord, and you're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the words of your hand. Mighty are the words of your hand. Your name is above all names. Lord, you're worthy of all our praise. You're worthy of the praise, Lord. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the words 
and we just go back in the day. Oh, oh, nobody. Come on, you let me hear you. Nobody like you. Say oh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoa. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Ah, de come on, declare it. Oh. Yes. Nobody yes, like sir. you, Lord. Nobody. 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 Nobody, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. Lift your hands say, oh. We got to get that nobody like you, Lord, spirit in this house. There's nobody like God. There's nobody like God. When, when you think about, when you think about the things, when you think about all the things that you've been through, just tell God, there's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. We got to get that in our spirit this morning. There's a sound. I hear a sound this morning. Glory to God. Nobody like you, God. Nobody like you. Yes, sir. I hear a sound. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. We got to surrender. Yes, sir. grandmother she used to be in a room and she used to grab her stomach sometimes and she used to lean over and start moaning I, I, I knew that she was dealing with something but she would just moan mm. and see sometimes we got to get in that place 
Well, we say, no matter what I go through, no matter what I'm confronted with in this earth, there's nobody like you, Lord. Even if you can't sing the song, I mean, sing the words to the song. Whoa. Yes, sir. Come on, Q. Oh. Yes, sir. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, God. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh. Lord. You are my glory, Lord. You are my glory, Lord. You are my glory, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. You are my healer, Lord. You are my healer, God. You are my healer, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. You are a way maker. Lord, yes, sometimes you gotta yes, get first. Yes, Lord. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. You are my provider, Lord. You are my provider, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody could have done it. But the Lord what the Bible says in the presence of God there is fullness of joy I said that's why the Bible says in the presence of God there is fullness of joy and even when you don't feel like being in his presence even when you don't feel like everything is caving in on you in the, in the presence of God it is fullness of joy Glory to God. Um, sometimes something happens when we, pers we are pursuing God. When we are pursuing God's presence, things begin to manifest in the spirit. And see, when we have a desire to be consumed with this holiness, something happens when believers are truly free in worship. Because whoever the sun sets free, whoever the sun sets free, I say whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Glory to God. That's why, that's why I love, I love the sons of Korah in Psalm 84. In Psalms 84, the sons of Korah talk about blessed are those who dwell in your house they are ever praising you blessed are those whose strength is in you whose hearts are set on pilgrimage it says better is one day in your courts hallelujah better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. It, it says, I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of the wicked. I, I'd rather be scrubbing the floors. I, I'd rather be scrubbing the toilets rather than being in the tent of the wicked. I'd rather be in your presence. I'd rather be a doorkeeper as long as I'm in your house. 
glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody, nobody like you, Lord. Father, we evoke your presence. Father, we invoke your presence on this morning. Father, you have already saturated this house. You've already saturated this house for healing to take place. Not only physical healing, but emotional healing. Father, saturate our hearts, Lord God, so that we can receive your word, Lord God, so that we can be stronger than ever. Hallelujah. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. No matter what I experience on this journey, there's nobody like you, God. I'm asking in the name of Jesus Christ for your anointing, Lord God, to fall fresh. Fall fresh on this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Your people, Lord God, have come for the word of God, for, for the word of truth. And I pray, God, that you use me as you see fit. That you use me, Lord God, as you see fit. Father, there's nobody like you. And whatever your people are in need of on this morning, Lord God, whatever their hearts have been desiring, whatever they have been praying for, I decree and declare, Lord God, that those things, are going to come to pass. Matter of fact, they're already coming to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you for your anointing, Lord God. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, that dwells on the inside of us. Father, saturate our hearts and our minds. Sanctify us with your word. Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty and magnificent name. Come on, let's give God some praise right there. You can be seated if you can. And our desire is to flow in the Holy Spirit and I know that we are typically used to an order but the Holy Spirit don't have order it flows like the wind flows like the wind glory of the Lord is in this house the glory of the Lord is in this place miracles have been flowing in this house. I believe we heard from Brother Stacy on last week when he gave his testimony. I believe he said that typically it takes 48 hours for an answer to get an answer on a pardon. But I believe he told us that before he got back to his car. I believe he said to me before he got back to his car, they, 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 they came running out the door saying your pardon has been approved. I, I, I believe that the Lord is doing some things, not only in this house, but in the body of Christ. I believe that someone outside of this ministry dropped a seed in this house. I, I believe that, that, that somebody in this house was exonerated after 48 years. We are in the presence of miracles, signs, and wonders. Grab hold to what God is doing in this place. Anybody need Jesus this morning? Anybody need his presence? I typically, those of you who are joining us by way of Facebook Live, good morning. God bless you for joining us this morning. 
typically how the Lord has been dealing with me. He deals with me in series. So as a minister, sometimes it takes more than one sermon to get to the root of something or to really get to a place where people truly understand what the Word of God is speaking. So today we're going to start a new series. And the Lord had been dealing with me about some things that's happening in the body of Christ. And there are things happening in the body. And the Bible speaks of the things that we were, we were going to see in the last days. And how, how many of you know that we are living in the last days? You do understand that. So more now than ever, the church has to be operating in power and authority and anointing. More now than ever. So the Bible is fulfilling itself. Even as we're in this house on today, the Bible is fulfilling itself. And we have to fulfill our God-given assignment while we still have time. So today I want to start a series called Sanctify, Call, and Set Apart. Sanctify, Call, and set apart because sanctification is the key to holiness and Elder Kelly was in my closet when he ministered one spirit I didn't tell him anything about what the Lord had been dealing with me about since New Year's Eve but I thank God for the spirit of God the spirit of unity, unity of spirit is in this house. So the series, again, is sanctified, called, set apart. Today's focus, today's focus is he's calling you. Today's focus is he is calling you. And I'm going to tell you why. There are people who dwell in churches. And I'm talking about, when I say churches, I'm talking about the body, the body of Christ. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the body. I'm not just talking about true church and ministries, but I'm talking about the body as a whole. Who say they are believers. They, they say they believe God, but their lifestyles are not aligned with what they believe. You say you sanctified and you say you holy, but your lifestyle does not line up with what you say out of your mouth. We're talking about the, we're talking about the body of Christ now. We have preachers who are compromising and making the church feel like a nightclub. You see, the enemy is trying to make the church look like the world. And what, and what is the church what, what, what is the church made of? The church is made of people like you and I. It's made of people. And the people make up the body of Christ. And if the people are not growing and not becoming sanctified, consecrated, holy, then what is the church? I'll tell you what it is. If, if, if people are not continuing to be sanctified and holy and operating according to the Spirit of God, I'll tell you what the church is. It's another building going out of business. Because remember, people make up the church. People make up the body of Christ. And when people come into the church, they bring spirits with them. And sometimes those spirits are not clean. But I decree and declare that the body of Christ, which includes true church and ministries, is and will always be in the soul winning business. Because he who wins souls is wise. And sanctification, consecration, and holiness wins people to Christ, not pretenders. 
There's too many pretenders and performers in the body of Christ. We got to have real people who really believe God, who really believe the things that, that we read in the Bible. It's one thing to read the Bible, but it's another thing to believe what it says. See, as I was studying this week, the Lord told me the church is supposed to be like a car wash. <laughs> church is supposed to be like a car wash. And when you take your vehicle to the car wash, you take, you take your, your vehicle to the, to the car wash when it's dirty. Are y'all here? You, you take your vehicle to the car wash when it's dirty. I, I believe when you go to the car wash, they have clean rags. They have clean cloth at the car wash. They don't have dirty rags at the car wash. You understand? So, so, because dirty can't clean dirty. Dirty can't sanctify and make clean. So I believe the church is supposed to be a car wash. In other words, you got people that's coming into the body, not only true church, but coming into the body of Christ who are dirty. And the church is supposed to clean them up. They may be dirty on the outside. And they may be dirty on the inside. They may even come, out, come in here smelling like the jungle. But the church... It's designed to clean, so supposed to be designed to clean them up. So when they come into the atmosphere, where the atmosphere is charged and sanctified and holy, they have no other choice but to come in one way and go out another way. Because they have come into the what? The presence of the people of God. Remember, the people make up the church. So they're coming into the presence of you and I. Yeah. So what are they coming into the presence of? Right. When they come to the church, when they come to a body all over this country, people are coming to bodies. Yeah. People are coming to, to bodies of Christ with different assignments in different regions. But again, the people are in those places. And, 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 and if the people are not clean themselves, how do we expect for others who come in dirty to get clean if you ain't clean? I believe, I believe, that, that, I believe that, that, that because of the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit, people can be set free. People can be delivered. But the church, the body of Christ, has to be conditioned with cleansing power. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So, so we can't be like the scripture tells us, Matthew 15 and 8 tells us that these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You can't say, hey, I want to be a member of true church and ministry. You, you are saying that you are joining a body of Christ. You can't say, I want to join the church, and then you go back and do the same thing you've been doing. You, you, you can't come into the knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ and get saved. You're supposed to be saved. You're supposed to be living that way. Your lifestyle is supposed to change. Because as your lifestyle changes, then others can get changed because of what God has done in you. Cleansing starts with us, the people of God. Let me give you a, let me give you a definition. As, as I typically, those of you who are, who are joining us by way of Facebook Live. I want you to put that in the chat. I want you to put that in the chat. I want you to put the name of this series in the chat. Sanctify, call, and set apart. Those of you who are on Facebook Live, some of y'all on Facebook Live right now, I understand that. If you if you're, uh, got your phones out, I want you to put that in the chat. And I want you to share it. Sanctify, call, because, because the body of Christ needs to hear this. L let me give you the definition of sanctification. And this, is gonna be, this, this series is going to be a little teachy, more so teachy than preachy. I know some of y'all are like, yeah, glory to God. No, I know that, but it's going to be a little bit teachy. It's going to be a little bit teachy. So sanctification, sanctification literally means to, 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 to set apart for special use or purpose. That is to make holy or sacred. Therefore, sanctification refers to the state or process, the state 
or process of being set apart, i.e. made holy as a vessel full of the Holy Spirit of God. I'm going to read that one more time. Sanctification literally means to set apart for special use or purpose, that is to make holy or sacred. Therefore, sanctification refers to the state or process of being, verb being, set apart, i.e. made holy as a vessel full of the Holy Spirit of God. So, so the definition says in process of being set apart. In other words, every day is a process of sanctification. Every day that we walk this thing out, it's, it is a process of being sanctified and made holy. It's, we're all in a process. And, and the, key, the, the key is, what are you doing to, to, to continue the process of sanctification? To continue to be set apart for God. J John 17. John 17 is so powerful because Jesus is praying for his disciples. This, this is Jesus talking. This is red letter. I want to start at verse, listen to me. I want to start at verse 13. Verse 13 says, I am coming to you now. And this is going to be out of the NIV version of the Bible. I, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world. So that, so that they may have the full measure of of my joy within them. I mean, joy, I mean, Jesus begins to talk about in praying for the disciples. He wants them to have full measure, full measure of my joy within them. That doesn't say anything about your house giving you joy, your car giving you joy, material things giving you joy. It says full measure of my joy, my joy, my joy within them. Because that joy is a joy that you can't even measure. It's not compared to, 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 to going to your favorite restaurant. It's not compared to going to your favorite vacation or your favorite place. It's not compared to the homes that, that you sleep in. It's not compared to the cars that you drive. Full measure. Those things don't matter to God. What matters to God is you got the, his joy on the inside of you. That's his prayer for his disciples while, while he's with them. I want you to have the full measure of joy. So no matter, no matter what you face in life, no matter how much sorrow comes your way, this joy that's on the inside of you, I want you to have the full measure of the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. This, this, is, this, is, this is awesome. It says, I have given them your word. Look how, look how he, look, look. he's praying for his disciples. He said, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer, here it is, my prayer is not to take, not to, to, that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. So if you're, if you're still here, He's praying for his, his disciples, but this applies to us today. That's why he put it in his scripture. You may not be taken out of the world, but I'm going to protect you from the enemy. That is my responsibility to protect you from the enemy when he comes. He may come against you one way, but shall be forced to flee from you in several different ways. That's the power of the Spirit of God, but you got to be sanctified. you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He's praying for them, for protection from the evil one. See, you see, you see, the protection from the evil one. See, he's, he's physically with them here. But the protection from the evil one is the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you today. Because Jesus was with them. He's praying for them in their presence. But guess what? He's not here with us physically now. But he's left us a comforter. He's left us a protector that's on the inside of us. You got to sanctify what's on the inside of you. Look at what it says. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Here it is. Verse 17. Here it is sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, 
I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too, glory to God, that they too may be truly sanctified. Let me, let me, I want that in the Amplifier. Give me a verse, actually, give me verses 17 through 19. Can y'all give me verses John 17 through 19 in the Amplifier? Look what the Amplifier says in 17 through 19. My God. It says, sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart for your purposes. Make them holy. Listen to the word. Listen to the word. Sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart for your purposes. Make them holy. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. Just as you commissioned and sent me into the world. I also have commissioned and sent them believers. I said believers with an S. He's commissioned us well, as, as believers into the world. For their sake, I sanctify myself to do your will so that they also may be sanctified, set apart, dedicated, made holy in your truth. Sanctification is a way of life. If you're going to be a believer, sanctification and holiness should be a way of life. <laughs> Y'all help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me. Sanctif sanctify, dedicate, consecrate myself that, that they also may be what? Sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, made holy. Made holy in what? In the truth. See, see, sanctify them with truth. Your word is truth. As we think about this, Moses told us that God's words, God's words, God's word are not merely words, they are life. That's what Moses told us. David tells us that it is more precious than gold. And Jesus tells us that man cannot what, live by bread alone, but by what every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. Moses and David and Jesus tells us those things. That the word is life. The word sanctifies our hearts and our minds. And the word causes us not to do things that the world does. The, word, the, 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 the sanctification process causes us not to be and look like the world. There's no way that we should have a bishop. I mean, I'm, I'm not attacking a church. I'm not attacking the church, but, but I, what I am saying, the church should not be looking like a nightclub. Amen. It, should be look, it should look holy because people are supposed to be holy. Yeah. I'm not being judgmental. I'm saying that we got to be real believers. L listen. The real holiness of all true believers today is the, today, today, because in, in Jesus' prayer, he's praying while he's physically present. But the real holiness of all true believers today is the, tr the, the fruit of Christ's death by which the gift of the Holy Spirit was purchased. He gave himself for the church to what? To sanctify it. He died. He died and was raised from the dead and sent us a comforter in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit to continue to sanctify, this church, sanctify the church in his physical absence. Yeah. So again, the church is supposed to be sanctified because the Holy Spirit is in us. Not, not in just what? Lip. But in belief. Because guess what? He tells us this. He tells us this in Matthew 7, 13 and 14. He said, enter through the narrow gate, for the wide is the gate and, the, and, and broad is the road that leads to what? Destruction. And many, and many enter through it, but, but the small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only, only what? And only a few, only a few, only a few find it. In order, to get, in order for you to get through that narrow gate, you got to be sanctified. <laughs> Listen, I mean, it's easy to live an unsanctified life. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You think about 
It's easy. It, it, it was. Let me, let me, Jesus. Yeah, it was. It was easy for you to curse every other word when you communicated in the past. It was easy. Some of y'all were masters of curse words. I mean, you, you, you had some rhythm going with that thing. It was easy. It was easy to live an unsanctified life. Y'all laugh because y'all know I'm telling the truth. It's, it's easy to live an undisciplined life. It's easy to eat what you want to eat. It's easy to eat what you want to eat. It's easy to go to any restaurant, eat how many sweets you want, eat how much food you want. It's easy to do that because it looks good and it tastes good. It's easy to do that. It's easy to live an undisciplined life. But it takes discipline to be a believer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It takes discipline. There's standards in the body of Christ. And a lot of those standards across the church as a whole, the body as a whole, are being compromised. And we can't compromise who we believe in and what we believe in. Because as you compromise, there's somebody that's watching you closely. You may not even see that they're watching you, but they're watching you closely. And they're watching how you're responding to certain situations. And they're watching how you're dealing with your wife and how you're dealing with your husband and how you're dealing with your supervisor on your job and how you're dealing with friends and how you're dealing with challenges in life. You are being watched. Do you have a sanctified response? Is your response sanctified? Is your response holy? It's easy not to submit to authority. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy to, to come to church when you want to. It's easy. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy to say, I can't pay my tithes and offer because I got bills to pay. It's easy to say that. It's easy to make an excuse. I can't do that because I got other things going on. It's easy. The enemy makes it easy. That's why we see what happened in the beginning. It was easy. He made it easy. He made it look good. He made it taste good. Because it looked good and it tastes good, but you weren't supposed to touch it. You understand what I'm saying? He wasn't supposed to touch it. And because it looked good and it was easy, she said, well, I'm going to give some to... Y'all know the story? It was easy. But look, listen. It's easy, but the word also says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. You got to go through him. Because I may not see what you're doing, but God sees what you're doing. God sees if you're living a sanctified life. He's calling you. He's calling you to a higher level of sanctification and holiness and consecration. He sees everything we do. Because here's, here's, what's, here's what's important. Here's what's important. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. 8.28. It says, and we know, y'all know the scripture, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are what? Called. Called. He is calling you. Called. According to what? His purpose. And sometimes we may not understand at times, his purpose, because his purpose to us may not necessarily make sense. Sometimes some of y'all think, well, why am I still coming to true church and ministries? Sometimes that purpose may not make sense, but as you sanctify yourself, as you rid yourself of the, of the, of, of the lurking issues that you deal with and get sanctified and holy, God is calling you to a higher level of purpose. Amen. And he's going to give you the clarity that you need in all things. He said, who are called according to what? His, his purpose. It's his gift. He created you. How you going to deal with somebody and deny somebody that created you? How, how, how are you going to not follow the principles of someone who created you, who brought you into this world? He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knew you. He created you. And since he created you, he's going to be the one that judges you. Look what it says. Look what it says. Y'all be patient with me now. I gotta, I'm, trying, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to go a little bit higher instead of riffling my papers up here. I got, me, I got my Bible and I got an iPad. Y'all stay with me now. Stay with me. Help, help me. Help me. 
It says, verse 29, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be what? The firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Here it is in verse 30. He says it, he says it again. And those he predestined, he also called. He said, those who are called according to his purpose, he also said, and those he predestined, he also what? Called. Those he, well, again, he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. He is calling you to a higher level of sanctification. Look what it says. Called. Noah was called to build the ark. Noah was called and assigned. God chose Noah to do something that nobody had ever done in history. He was called to do that. David was called to slay Goliath. He was called to do that. Not only was he called to use one stone to take Goliath down, he was called to take Goliath's sword and chop his head off. He was called to do that. David was called to do that work. Moses was called to part the Red Sea. Moses did that. After Moses died, Joshua was called to lead the people to Israel. He was called to do that. God calls you to do something. And if he calls you to do it, he's going to give you the resources to complete it. Even when you think you don't have the resources. God called you to do this work. And he's going to give you what you need to complete the work. But you've got to be sanctified. You've got to be holy. And you've got to be listening to what God is speaking. These people were called because they have a relationship. Peter was called to walk on the water. You, weren't, you, were, you were not just called to sit in seats in churches. You, 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 were, you, you were called to be more than seat warmers. You were called to be more than somebody that's come and throw your hands up, sit down, leave. Come, throw your hands up, lift to the earth, sit down, leave. You were called to more than that. These people were called. These people were called to things that others didn't think they could do. You are called to things that others don't think you could even do. I was selected to be the pastor of this church. That's a calling. That's a calling. That's a calling. It was up to me to accept the call. So I, I'm saying to you, it's up to you to accept it. Because if he called you, he's going to allow you the ability to do it. Even when you think, come on, Holy Ghost. Even when you think you won't have time to do it. He's, a ma he's the master of time. He created time. And see, if people sit there and think of, think about they, they ain't no God. Well, why does the sun set in the evening? Why does it rise at a certain time in the morning? How, how do we have all this water and, and, and the water just come just far enough and it stops? And, and there ain't no God? Listen, listen to me. Peter was called to walk on water. No other disciple walked on water. Andrew didn't walk on water. James didn't walk on water. John didn't walk on water. Philip, Thomas, certainly not, certainly not Judah. We know what Judas did. Peter, it was Peter that was called to walk. None of the other disciples walked on water. Peter did because he was called to do that. I believe I said the series is what? Sanctified, called, and set apart. God has set you apart to do something that nobody else could do. You have to accept that responsibility. Some of us don't want to accept that I'm different. It's, it's a reason why you the way you are. It's a reason why you speak the way you speak. It's a reason why you look the way you look because you've been set apart by God. It's a reason for that. It's a reason that you've been set in the places that you've been. It's a reason why you've been planted in true church and ministry. You're not just planted here just to be planted here. That's something that God wants you to do. 
It's a reason for that. It's a reason why, Brother Mick, it's a reason why some of us are traveling 40 and 45 minutes to this church. It's a reason for that because God was calling you here and he was calling you here for a reason. It's something for you to do. I'm getting close. It was Peter who was called to do it. There are certain things that only you can do. Only you are called to do certain things. And what the Lord was giving me is when Peter stepped out of the boat, Peter was the only one who stepped out of the boat. And, 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 the, and the 11 disciples remained in the boat seated. And what the Lord has given me is this. Now, I'm, not, I'm not just talking about true church and ministries. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about the body of Christ. In, in, in other words, there are too many boats fo- floating in the water with people seated. And what I mean by that, there are too many churches where people are floating in boats. They float themselves to the church. But when they come to the church, that's the boat. I'm talking about the body of Christ. That's the boat. And there are too many people seated in the church and not getting out of the boat like Peter did. Peter got out of the boat. The 11 disciples Watch Peter get out of the boat. They didn't try to stop him. He got out of the boat. They didn't go with him. He walked on water. And because, and because Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on water, remember now, in, in, in a couple of verses earlier than this, in that text, just, just to make sure you understand where I'm at, uh, uh, and I'm not going to go through all this. You all know the story. In Matthew 14, you know, it talks about Peter, Peter and, and Peter walking, walking on water around 28, 28 through 33. And we understand the story of that, uh, where Peter did this. And 32 says, and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died. When, when, it, when I say they climbed, Peter climbed back in the boat because Jesus had, when he started to sink, Jesus lifted him up, right? And in verse 33 says, here's what 33 says. Here, here's what the body of Christ has to do. He says, then those who were in the boat then those who were in the boat, then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, truly, you are the son of God. So what I'm saying is when you step out on God, when you step out on God, people will begin to understand who God is when you get out of the boat. People will begin to understand who God truly is, that he is the Messiah. He just fed 5,000. You understand me? Well, Peter understood that he, I, I just witnessed Jesus feeding 5,000 people in a couple of verses before. And then Peter understood that. So Peter, based on what he saw, you know, I know he's the Messiah. I know who he is. I'm getting out of the boat because God is calling me to get out of the boat. And because Peter got out of the boat, he was willing to do it all by himself. What did he say? Truly. They said, truly, you are what? The son of God. Because of what Peter did. There's some things that you have to do because you are being put on display. For others to understand who God is. That means you can't stop. That means that you can't sit at the bar and take shots like everybody else. That means you can't float in circles and curse and live a lifestyle like everybody else. You've been set apart. You've been set apart for the things of God. you got to be different like Peter was. Peter was different. Peter was called. Look for Jesus and keep looking to Jesus. I said look for Jesus and keep looking to Jesus. Although a storm surrounded him, Peter looked to Jesus. The only problem was that he stopped looking at Jesus. And and, and see, the principle is clear, especially when the storms of life are raging. Look for Jesus and keep looking to Jesus. What does it look like for you to what? Look like Jesus or look to Jesus. When Jesus 
commands you to obey him. Jesus told Peter to come to him on the water. Even though it made no sense, Peter did what Jesus said. This is what obedience looks like, doing what Jesus says. Is there any area in your life that you're not obeying the Lord? Fear will sink you. When, when Peter had faith, he walked on water. When he had fear, he sank in the water. The same is true for you. Fear will sink you. Is there any fear that's gripping and controlling your decisions? Peter wasn't sinking in water. He was sinking in doubt. God is calling you today. Give me something, Mike. God is calling you today. I want to do an illustration. And, and, and let, me, let me prep this with clarity. I'm calling random names. When I call these names, has nothing to do, this is not something, this is the Holy Spirit working in and through me in this moment. Has nothing to do, the names that I call has nothing to do with what I'm going to say. But it's the meaning behind what I'm going to say. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to do that. I'm going to call your name. All I want you to do is stand up. That's it. I said when I call your name, all I want you to do is stand up. The camera's not on you. I'm going to call your name, but I want you to stand up. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to call a few names. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call my wife so y'all understand with clarity. Kim. Latoya. Deacon Matt. Brother Ed. Rayford. Corey. Lewis Jr. Tamika. Mickey. Ricky, Letitia, Tiffany, random name, Miles. The consistent theme of what I just did is when I called their names, they were obedient. And they stood without question. Y'all can sit down. Here it is. I'm going to call some more names. Intercessor. Teacher. Preacher. Doorkeeper. Youth leader. Usher. Y'all got to understand what I'm saying. Evangelist. Singer. Singer. Praise and worship leader. Dancer, server, God is calling you. And there are people that may not be standing, but your name is being called. And God is expecting you to answer. Not only is he he's expecting you to answer, but he's expecting you to be obedient to the call. He's calling you. There's work to do. And only you can fulfill this spot. Nobody else can fulfill this spot but you. Your name is being called. It's time for you to be obedient to the call.
God is calling you. But in the call, it requires a lifestyle that lines up with the call. You can't say you are in ministry, but your life don't line up with what God is saying. You can't say you're in ministry or a member of a congregation when you're not even sanctified, when you're not holy, when you're, when you're, when you're not living that lifestyle. God is calling you to a new level of glory. We've been talking about that. And as God responds and people start fulfilling those spots, the Bible says in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice. We're so, we supposed to be rejoicing when people fill those spots, when God promotes. Because God, God is the one that adds to the church. God promotes in the body. God does that. God blesses. We are blessed. We are blessed to be a blessing. When that seed was sown, and I turned around, and the Spirit said, bless. When I called the two names, when I called the two names, rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the midst of the blessing. Indicating that, that, that it was Sister Billy this time. It was Cassandra this time. But my blessing is coming. Your name is being called. You got to respond to the call. Come on, Q. Let's all stand. We feel led to come. Of course, the altar is open. The Bible says that in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 26, and when one member suffers, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. God is calling us. He's calling your name. He's calling your name. And it's up to you to respond to the call. If you know he has been calling your name, and you want to solidify that today, come. That's good right there. That, that's good right there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank y'all. You know yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know my yeah, name. you know my name. You know my name. Oh, how he walks with yes, sir. me. Yes, sir, the altar is open. The altar is open. Oh, how he talks with me. Altar is open. Altar is open. Oh, how he tells me. Yes, sir. That I am your own. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Calling your name. Oh, how he walks with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, how he talks with me. Hey, give me, no, give me those words if you can, please. Oh, how he tells me. Hey, hey, hallelujah. That I am your own. Yes, sir. Oh, you know my name. You know my name. My God. You know my name. Yes, sir. You know my name. Yes, sir. You know my name. Yes, sir. Oh, how he yes, walks sir. with me. Oh, how he walks with me. Glory to God. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he tells me, yes, sir. Come on, that come on. I am 
15, 5 says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If, if, if you remain in me, and I in you, you will, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If, if you remain in me and my words remain in you. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Ask whatever you wish. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to, to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourself to be my disciple. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you have heard the hearts of your people. Father, I have read your word. That, that it says if you remain in me 
let my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And I'm declaring and agreeing that they're asking, Lord God, and you're going to answer. You are already answering what they have been petitioning you for. And God, you have called their name, and they have responded to the call. And because they have responded to the call, you're going to give them their resources. You're going to give them the ability to do the work that you've already equipped them to do. Whatever they need, whatever they are in need of in the name of Jesus Christ, it is done in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah! Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Lord God. It is done in Jesus' name. These things we ask in the precious, mighty name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, sanctify our hearts today. Sanctify us with your truth. Sanctify us with your word because your word is truth. And your word is life. Father, we speak life today. We speak life, life, life in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We decree it and we are in agreement that this too shall pass. That this too shall pass in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All these things we ask of thee. All these things we ask of thee. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and give thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know my name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know my name. Thank you, Lord. You know my name. Yes, sir. Oh, how you talks with me. Glory to God. Oh, how he tells me. I am your own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Elder Kelly to uh, close us out with our tithes and offerings prayer. Also, I also want him to acknowledge his guests this morning as well that's with us. The sisters are here. I'm going to let him acknowledge them. But I want to acknowledge all those who are visiting with us by way of Facebook Live also that are presently here with us. I pray that you understand that you are here not by accident, but by, the, by God's divine appointment. In this season, the time of sanctification. God bless you. God bless you for being with us on this week. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. To God be the glory Amen. for all that he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, as Pastor said, my, my sisters are here. Half of them are here. I have four sisters, and uh, they, uh, they laugh because I always, you know, I'm the baby. But I, <laughs> but I say the youngest is here, and then the next to the youngest, Gwen and Jackie, are here with us. We're celebrating Gwen's birthday. Amen. Raise, raise your hand. Raise your hand right there. Let yeah, y'all raise your hand. They're right there. Amen. Amen. 
I told them we weren't going to put them on, on spot, but it's been a, a delight to have them with us uh, this weekend. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's that time to give. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down. Yes, sir. Shaking together. Running over. How many of us walking in the overflow? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs> and even if you don't have it to give, put something in your hand. Just wave your hand. God knows where you are. He knows what you need. He shall supply. Yes, sir. All of your needs. Yes, sir. And your wants according to his riches and glory. Amen. Ask and it shall be given. Yes, sir. Seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be open. Mm. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you so much, Lord, that you called us. Yes, sir. Father, your chosen, your elect, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord, that you have a calling upon our lives. Yes, Father, you knew us before the foundations of the world, God. You called us, Father, while we were in our mother's womb. Yes. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that in this time, Father, we're able to give back what's, what you've given unto us. Father, a tenth and more. Father, so we're just giving back what you've already given to us, Lord. And we give it, Lord God, not grudgingly. Father, we are, you said you love a cheerful giver. And so, Father, we give it back cheerfully, Lord God. And, Father, if you don't do anything else for us, Lord God, it's all right with us. But, Lord, we know that you're a good God. We serve a great Father. And we know, Lord God, that you will bless us, Father, beyond our wildest imagination or dreams. But, Father, most importantly, you bless us, God, that we might lift up your kingdom and build your kingdom so father we thank you we praise you we honor you in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen hey, hey before we do that let, let's let what we're gonna do is we'll just take the uh tithes and offerings as we exit but, but elder kelly i want you to do this too i know that where, where's todd where brother todd at man come on man come on up here real quick i want uh todd to stand in the gap his son is going to be leaving for the military Amen. His son Jalen is going to be leaving for the military, and we want to pray. Come on, come on up here, Ivy. Pass that, pass that, pass that bucket to somebody else. D Deacon Hamlin, we want to pray with them. And, 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 and uh, yeah, he's, I mean, uh, yeah, come on up, Hazel. Um, we want to just be in agreement uh, with them. Well, when, is he, when is he leaving? He's leaving tomorrow. Amen. And uh, we just want to speak a word of protection. Blessing over our, our brother Jalen's life. His grandmother, his parents are going to stand Hallelujah. in agreement as uh, as Elder Kelly prays. You can hold her hand. And then uh, once, once, you, once you pray, Elder Kelly, then we'll dismiss by way of social media as well. All right, God bless you. Father, we thank you so much. Yes, Lord. Father, for what you're doing in and through this family. Yes, Lord. Father, that they are standing here, Father, by prayer. Yes, and Father, we thank you for our brother, young brother Jalen, Lord God, as he departs and going to the military, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray, God, your covering and your protection to be upon him, Lord. Yes. Your hand is already upon him. Yes. And Father, we're just thanking, Lord God, that he is going to be light in dark places. God, we know, Lord God, that he already has the victory, Lord, as he goes through his training. Father, we declare and decree, Father, that favor yes, will sir. fall upon his life, God, that he will have favor with the sergeants, God, that he will have favor with leaders, God. Everywhere his foot stands, Lord, you will be in the midst, God. Yes, Father, we pray for a hedge of protection to be encamped all around him, God. No weapon formed against no him way. shall prosper. No Lord, that, 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 Lord God, that you've been protecting him all along, God. And Father, we know that you are preparing him for this assignment father i thank you so much father for his for his father father for his mother his family his grandmother lord the prayers of the righteous yes, availeth much and father and what we're seeing right now in this dispensation lord is a sign miracle and wonder yes, and so father i pray lord as he leaves to go into the army lord that his heart will be touched father to be reminded to be in your army yes, lord that he might be able to lead other young men and other young women father into the kingdom of god lord so let your kingdom
kingdom come. Yes, Let sir. your will be done in his life. Yes, in sir. Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, I pray, Lord, when he opens his mouth, Lord, that they will hear a sound that comes hey. from you. Yes, and so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, wherever he's going. Father, that your hedge of protection is encamped all around him, God, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, not only will he be a blessing to others, but he'll be a blessing to his family. So, Father, we pray right now that you touch his finances, God. Touch his health, God. Touch his mind in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you and we consider it done. In your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. God bless y'all. All right. Thank you so much for our family that is online. Uh, we love you. And again, put it into action because God has called you for such a time as this. All right. We love you and go in God's peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all give somebody a word of encouragement. Hug somebody. Just tell them hello. Hello.